this to me he said yes we say the righteousness of God is revealed it is sought for it is not just given in as much as the righteousness of God is revealed he said remind my people that the wrath of God is also revealed to me if you want to take the Bible as it is in the letter he said when you see the heavens when you see everything created the wrath of God should be revealed to you by just looking at it. But by revelation, we understand that it is revealed also. That we just don't know it. Just like um, Jesus told Philip, I've been with you all this while. But you've never known me. You've known me. You know me. You know my height. You know my accent. You know who I am. You know my height. You know maybe you you know that you know that I live uh, I live you know you you know that I live in, in uh, around Feltham. You 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 have an idea of 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 how I look dark, not very tall, but you don't know me. I've been with you all this while. You can describe me, but you don't know me. Only know me in Carabas. So it takes revelation. To know the wrath of God. It takes revelation to understand the wrath of God. The Spirit of God was ministering to me and he was telling me the same way I said in the book of John chapter 2, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. They will see vision and dreams and they will prophesy. They will see visions. So they will also see visions about my wrath. Some of us, the kindness of God is not enough to bring us to repentance. Some of us, the wrath of God needs to be revealed to us for us to decide to come out of the gross darkness that we are into. We need to wake up in a dream where the very thing that God has been talking to you about, he speaks to you and he releases his wrath. That's what some of us need. So, Therefore, we pray this afternoon that the wrath of God will be revealed, that it will be known through visions and dreams, that it will be known, that the eyes of our understanding will be known. 
the fear of the Lord is one of the seven spirits as well. We don't talk a lot about it. We talk about the spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom. But let us remember the fear of the Lord. It makes us of quick understanding. We understand quickly that this is not of God. We understand quickly that we need to let it go. We understand quickly that we need to kariba so kate kata. That because if I don't do that, hey, kati polo koto. The wrath of God is revealed unto me. There have been too much of kindness to us. Some of us now, we need his wrath to be revealed unto us so that we will see and we will run. Let us remember the fear of God. Is also one of the seven spirits. So the wrath of God is also revealed. Let's not just assume that people know. Yeah, it says that, yes, you can see the tree. Where does it come from? The heaven. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything to us. It needs to be revealed. Know that you know. Then if I do that, that's the fear of God. Be restored into the body of Christ. Mm. The fear of God. When I hear of a minister going in a particular ministry and then they put something in, in his in you know, to try and poison. I mean, so you have the spirit of wisdom, you have the spirit of understanding, so you are not even fearing God. Hmm. May the Lord help us. The fear of God, the wrath of God needs to be revealed mightily throughout the world, all over the world, in the body of Christ, outside the body of Christ, everywhere his wrath needs to be revealed. So that some of us can quickly run. Some of us we need that. So that we can run and come out of our rock, cross darkness. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you.
God is moving Oh. 
Thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the inflows, the rain that I've already released this afternoon. Thank you because you've blessed us. Amen. And thank you because uh, you, we, we have received your blessings. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, I subject my heart, my soul, my mind to as channels Interrelated channels to receive the evils. Let me be aligned, who will align me into your will, into your word. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. And let us all receive this rain, this water of life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
And today we want to um, digest more on understanding the misunderstood scriptures and uh, I kept waiting and waiting and waiting on the word of God the face in the scriptures that I want us to um, unleash this afternoon after many waiting well I just left it now I know one thing about the Spirit of God how, how he work with me is that even if I get here you will still tell me what to say so I just left it and then he led me into this scripture I said that but I've, I mentioned this thing during the program yesterday I said yes I want you to work on it Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 And the Lord God took the man okay. and put him into the garden of Eden okay. to dress it and to keep it. Oh, yes. And the Lord God took the man. And put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Mm. Mm. And the Lord God took the man. Lord, help my heart to your influence. I don't have a particular direction. Don't have anything. I didn't write anything down. Just help me. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Can we um, join in together? Uh, what garden mean? Garden of Eden. Then, then also to. To understand what's work, this work, this is the only work that God gave man. This is the only work that God gave man. This is the only work that God gave man. The only purpose of man is to dress and to keep He put him in the garden. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden. To dress it and to keep it.
So dress in NIV means to walk. And to keep means to care, to take care of it. So the only, or let me say, the two purposes of man from God is to dress and to keep. Amen. 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 Um, meditating asking if God wants me to really talk about where the garden started from. But because of our time, let me just let me just go along. I know the space of God will um, speak to my heart what to. So uh, I won't really talk much about dressing today. I'm going to mention it, but not too much because we've been talking and talking about it. But the reason I will mention it, maybe based on people that are just maybe being the first time to watch this uh, broadcast. So let me mention it. Uh, okay. Now, if the purpose is to dress and to keep the garden, then this garden, what is this garden all about? Then we discover that the garden of God is the presence of God. The garden is the uh, the only access of God to man, of heaven. The only path that link heaven to hearts is the garden. Then at the same time. We also see that the heavens and the hearts together. This heaven and this heart is or her in the beginning. In the beginning. Then if we are to also dig on who the beginning is. Then we'll see that the beginning is is the Lord God. He said, I am the beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega. The first and the last. Oh, Revelation 4 hits. And Revelation 1 hits. The word beginning means alpha or the first. The word head means omega or the last. The high am the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Revelation 4, please. Revelation 1, it's. Mm -hmm. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, says the Lord, which is presently, and which was past, and which is to come, future. The Almighty, the Lord God. Amen. So the Lord is the beginning and the end. I 
don't want to go into some things just now. But the image of God, that is where God created man. He created man in, in the image of God. God created man in the image. And this image is the Son of God. And it is in the Son. So, let's say the image of God is what the Lord God is. The Lord God is the image of God. The Lord God is the beginning and the end. The Lord God is the beginning and the end. So this Lord God is the image, image, the beginning and the end, the image of God. And we can see through John 1, 1, it says, now in the image of God, or in the beginning and the end. He said, in the beginning was the world. So if you have to uh, go back, you know, let's do this like we are doing equations in mathematics or in physics. Or in metaphysics, you know, let's do a similar equation. Now we have the beginning and the end, which is Lord God. And this Lord God, which is the beginning and the end, is the image of God. Is the uh, uh the son of God. So the son is the image of the invisible God. So if you are to link uh John 1 1 to uh put John 1 1 inside. Genesis 1 1, Bible says in Genesis 1 1, in the beginning, inside the beginning, you know, it is it, it is the same, uh, it is inside the same beginning that God created man, which is the image of God, you know. It is good to uh, understand uh, these mysteries and this secret of God. It will help you to bring many words that are being used in the scripture to bring them together so that to analyze and to understand the whole uh riches you know within a particular being so god created man in his whole image and this image of him is the beginning and the end he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the first and the last. And this image is the Son of God. He is the Son that express uh, the uh, the uh, express the glory of God. He is the he is the one that radiates the the glory of God. Hallelujah. He is the Son of God. And this Son of God is also uh it is, it is through the Son of God that the Word of God comes out. That's why John 1, 1 says, In the beginning, in the image of God, in the beginning was the Word. And it is true because it is in the image of God, which is the Son of God, which is the beginning and the end, that the Word of God resides. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, we have the image of God now. We have the Son of God, right? Now, sorry, we have the uh, image of God, which is the Son of God. We are now have the Word of God. It's like you have me now, and I have the Word of God within me. Praise the Lord. And within the Word of God is the Garden of God, or the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You can see there are three layers now, or four layers. The image, the Word, uh, the garden of God. Praise the Lord. The garden of God. Then we have the tree of life. Then we now have the fruit on the tree of life. So these are five now. You can see I've done five now. We have the image of God. This image of God is the beginning and the end. So when the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the hearts. So <laughs> we will say, in the image of God, God created the heavens and the hearts. When he created the heavens and the hearts, then the word of God is in within this heaven and this hearts, praise the Lord. And now 
In the word of God, we have the garden of Eden. Praise the Lord. Now, in the garden of Eden, we have the tree of life. And also we have the uh, forbidden tree. The reason we have the tree of life and the forbidden tree in uh, the word of God is that to produce the right word, you need to ignore the wrong words. For you to know the purity of the word of God, how pure the word of God is. Praise the Lord. Mm. The presence of the second tree must be there. Mm. Yes. If the second of if the presence of the second tree is not there, praise the Lord, uh, man will not have uh, uh, that's why the Bible says in, in, in the beginning was the word and the word will be God, and the word was God. And in the word, through, uh, through the word, all things were made. There was nothing made that has been made. He said, In him was life. That life is talking about the tree of life. It is in the word of God that you have the tree of life. The whole uh, picture of the tree of life is about the knowledge of life. It's the tree of life. Everything you must, must understand about life. In him was life. Praise the Lord. And the life was a light of men. Praise the Lord. So, if you are to bring it, but let me start it all over again. We have the image of God. And in the image of God, God created the heavens and the heart. After creating the heavens and the hearts, then he created man. So when you see that God created man in his own image, in his own image, in his own image, you can see there are two layers. You have the image of God. Now, in the image of God is the in the is the is, is, is in the image of God that God created the heavens and the hearts. When he created the heavens and the hearts, then he created man. So that man can have dominion over the heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, uh, God created the heaven in the image of God. God created the heavens and the hearts. In the image of God, let me start all over again. Accurately, in the image of God, God created the heavens and the hearts. Mm -hmm. And in the heaven and hearts is the world. And in the world, as in W O H D, the word of God. And in the word of God, then he put man, he created man in the word of God. Because he want man to grow in, the, in his own presence. Because that's the presence of God. So, now he created man in the word of God. Hallelujah. Then, after creating man in the word of God, he blessed them and said, be fruitful. After that time, uh... In the word of God, we have the garden of hidden or the garden of God. Isaiah called it the garden of God. Ezekiel called it the garden of God. He said hidden, the garden of God. So garden, we can call it garden of God or hidden, the garden of God. It's still the same thing. So in the garden of God, we have the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Both of them, they are always there. Praise the Lord. And in this uh, two trees, then we have, let's now focus on the tree of life. In the tree of life, we have, uh, uh, in the tree of life, in the tree of life, we now have uh, the fruits, the 12 manner of fruits on the tree of life, which man that has been created in the garden must eat. Let me just read like that so that we don't go too much uh, into what all this total uh, all the fullness of God that dwells in this sun or in this image are, are, are of God. They are of God. All of them. That is what uh, Colossians was talking about. He said, in him all the fullness uh, the fullness of God. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Because these are the total things of God. The image of God. Mm -hmm. The first thing is the image. So uh God the the image of it is within the image of God that you have the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that you have that you have the you have the beginning and the end, or you have the 
heaven and the heart. Now, heaven and the heart, then we have the word of God. In the, in the beginning was the word. You have the word of God, praise the Lord, then Amen. you have man. After having man, then we have uh, the tree, the garden of God. Then after the garden of God, we have uh, the tree of life. And we have 12 manner of fruit. But you can see all of them are within the image of God. So when Colossians was now saying that um, that um, he said for verse 16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on hearts, visible and invisible, Amen. whether they be thrones or dominion or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And verse 17 said, and he is before all things. You can see. He is before all things because he is the image of God. He is before all things and by him all things consist. You can see all things that consist right now in him. Amen. You can see the layers, like seven layers now. Initially I started with two layers. Then the Holy Spirit make it three layers. Then five layers. Now well, we have seven layers. Because in him, in the image of God, which is the Son of God, all things consist. Amen. All things consist. And um, and he is the head of the body, the church. Amen. Who is the beginning? You can see they mentioned the beginning again. Who is the head of the church? Who is the head of the body, the church? Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead? That in all things he might have the preeminence. Amen. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Amen. And having made peace to the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto him or to himself. By him, I say whether they be things in hearts or things in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can see. So, uh, uh, last uh, teaching we talk about uh, that God has His own blood, and that is His blood He puts in His cup and give it to uh, Jesus to drink. That is when Jesus, for the first time, uh, drank. The blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But that drinking, you can see what happened. He carried the cross, he went to the cross, they beat him, so many things happened. He died, he went to uh Hades, that is uh, what people call hell, and he collected the key of death. You know, the, hallelujah. Because mm -hmm. uh the, the he, he he honed the key from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But the first had up left or lost the key. Hallelujah. So you have to go back and collect the key. You, this key is not, you are not the owner of the key. It is the life that holds the key to death. It's not the dead that holds the keys to life. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Amen. this key belongs to me. And you can see when he got to uh, death, he could not hold him back. He just beat the key, man. But he lost his wrong and he instantly, because he knew that the owner of the key has come to take it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the purpose why uh, the life is the owner of the key to death. Is because uh, um, um, he used that. Let me say that things called that is everything that they are called on one thing things. Like you, let me use it. Let me use it, normal understanding. Like you have your house, you room your house, you clean everything, and now put everything you don't want in your house in the bin. Mm -hmm. You know, but this bin. Let me use it like uh, uh, the computer bin called recycle bin. Mm -hmm. You know, recycle bin. What's about recycle bin on your system, your desktop or laptop? Is that you can still go back to pick a file you already deleted. 